first of all one example based on Reynolds number. We have already studied the Reynolds experiment and from Reynolds experiment we know we came to know about Reynolds number which is NRE is equals to du rho by mu. With the help of that we can know the type of the flow. So in this example we have to calculate the type of the flow. So let us start. See the statement of the example. What it says that water at 10 degree centigrade flowing at an average velocity of 2 meter per second in a 100 mm pipe. Specific gravity of water is 1 and viscosity is 1.6 cp. Find whether the flow is laminar, turbulent or transition. So in this example we have to know the type of the flow. It is laminar, turbulent or transition. To know the type of the flow we have to first calculate the Reynolds number. From the value of that Reynolds number you can say that this is this type of the flow. So let us first note down the data which was given. The diameter of the pipe is given 100 mm which is equals to 0.1 meter. Specific gravity of water is given 1. I have already told you that how to calculate density from specific gravity. Multiply it with density of water which is 1000 kg per meter cube. So here specific gravity of water is given 1. So in 2000, so density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. Velocity u is equals to 2 meter per second which was given directly and viscosity is 1.6 cp and 1 cp is equals to 1 into 10 raise to minus 3 pascal second. We have to follow the unit consistency. So cp which is centipoise that we have to convert into pascal second. So 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 3 pascal second. So now we have all the data d, u, rho and mu. Fine. We know that nre is equals to d u rho by mu. We have all the data. Put this data in this equation. So nre is equals to 0 0.1 into 2 into 1000 divided by 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 3. When you will solve this, you will get the answer of NRE is equal to 1,25,000. As this value is greater than 4,000, the flow is of which type? The flow is turbulent. We have already seen that in our previous session. When NRE is less than 2,100, the flow is laminar. When NRE is greater than 4,000, the flow is turbulent. And when NRE is between 2,100 to 4,000, it is transition region. And in this example, the value of NRE come to 1,25,000. So it is greater than 4,000. So the type of flow will be turbulent. So when it is asked like that, whether the flow is laminar, turbulent or transition, you have must mention the flow is turbulent. Fine. So this is the example of Reynolds. Now let us move to the new topic which is boundary layer formation. This boundary layer formation we have to consider while we are dealing with fluid dynamics. You can see in the figure. This boundary layer formation is for flow through or you can say flow over a flat plate. This is a flat plate. See here. This is the flat plate. The flow direction is like this from here. Fine. The flow of the fluid, so I can say that this the flow of the fluid is parallel to the thin plate. This is the thin plate, flow is in this direction. So the flow is, flow of the fluid is parallel to the thin plate. When a fluid flows over a stationary surface like this flat plate, the fluid touching the surface is brought to rest by the shear stress at the wall. Clear? When this fluid is flowing from here, see. This is the flat plate. The fluid is moving in this direction. So, the fluid particle which is near to this surface wall is brought to rest by the shear stress at the wall. The region in which the flow adjusts from zero velocity at the wall to maximum at the center, the flow is termed as boundary layer. 
this is very important again i am repeating the region in which the flow adjusts from the zero velocity zero velocity is where near solid wall or at the solid wall so what will happen see here at this wall surface the velocity is zero so what is boundary layer the boundary layer is the region between the zero velocity at the surface of the wall to the maximum in the main stream of the fluid is termed as boundary layer so this see this pink portion which was shown in this figure here from the zero region zero velocity region it is this at solid wall to here the main stream of the fluid this portion is known as boundary layer right so the region between the zero velocity at the wall to the maximum velocity at the main stream of the fluid is known as boundary layer this boundary layer is divided into three la layer see here in this figure she this is viscous sub layer at the bottom above that there is a buffer layer and above that there is a overlap layer now what was that the thickness of the boundary layer we have discussed the what is boundary layer the region between the zero velocity to maximum velocity is known as boundary layer but what about the thickness of that boundary layer thickness of the boundary layer is defined as the distance from the wall to the point where the velocity is 99% of the free stream velocity again i am repeating thickness of the boundary layer is defined as the distance from the wall to the point where the velocity is 99% of the free stream velocity that is the thickness of the boundary layer now what are the three layer first is viscous sub layer viscous sub layer is the layer where the laminar flow starts fine viscous sub layer is the layer where the laminar flow starts above that there is a buffer layer buffer layer is the zone just outside the viscous sub layer in which the gradient of time average velocity is still very high fine the viscous sub layer next to that there is a buffer layer and it is a zone of the gradient of time average velocity where it is very high and the last layer is overlap layer overlap layer connects both the outer region and the inner region fine so these are the different layers which will exist in the boundary layer formation so this is about the boundary layer formation in case of a flat plate now what if we have tube or pipe so next is boundary layer formation in straight tube the concept and the principle is same as in the boundary layer formation in flat plate you can see in the figure see this is the both solid wall there is a solid wall on both the sides this is the zero velocity at the surface so the boundary layer forms like this see here and it goes again decreasing again decreasing and it comes like this fine so this dotted line shows the boundary layer formation boundary layer edge fine the concept is same as in the flat plate so i can say that boundary layer begins to form at the entrance of the pipe due to viscous effect of the surface and the thickness of the boundary layer increases as we move in the direction of the flow that you can very well understand from the figure that thickness of the boundary layer increases as we move in the direction of the flow and the fluid outside the boundary layer reaches the center of the pipe the fluid which is outside the boundary layer reaches the center of the pipe the boundary layer occupies the entire cross section of the pipe and velocity distribution thus reaches its final form in case of a tube and the velocity distribution then does not vary in the remaining portion of the pipe once the boundary layer formation occurs the velocity distribution then does not vary in the remaining portion of the pipe and the flow 
with an unchanging velocity distribution is known as fully developed flow. This is very important term. Again, I am repeating the flow with an unchanging velocity distribution. That means the flow occurs in which now there is no change in the velocity distribution. That is the flow with an unchanging velocity distribution is known as fully developed so this is about boundary layer formation in a flat plate and boundary layer formation in a straight tube. Now let us discuss the next topic which is boundary layer separation and wake formation. How this boundary layer separates and how the wake formation occurs. For that to understand this we have taken two examples. We have taken two cases. Case 1 in which the flow of the fluid is parallel to the flat plate. And case 2 is the flow of the fluid perpendicular to the flat plate. Let us discuss first case which is flow parallel to the flat plate. See here in the figure. This dark portion shows the flat plate. This is the flat plate and this is the direction of flow. So that is the case of flow parallel to the flat plate. Fine. So now what will happen? The flow of the fluid goes like this and as the plate comes in the path of the flow, the flow direction changes like this and again it goes like this. So what will happen? The boundary layers on the two sides of the plate have grown to maximum thickness. The boundary layer on the two sides of the plate have grown to maximum thickness. And for a time after, fluid is leave the plate and the layers and velocity gradient persist. Fine. So for a time after, fluid leaves the plate and the layers and velocity gradient persist. However, the gradient fade out and the boundary layers intermingle and disappear. At the end of this flow, see here. The gradient fade out and the boundary layers intermingle here and disappear and the fluid once again move with uniform velocity. Clear? After the plate, after the flow leaves the plate, fine, the velocity gradient disappears and the fluid once again move with uniform velocity. So that is the case 1 which is flow parallel to the flat plate. Now in case 2 the flow perpendicular to the flat plate. See here this is the plate which is like this and the flow is in this direction. So I can say this is the flow perpendicular to the flat plate. So the flow of the fluid moves like this see here and in this case there is the formation of wake. See here, the tendency of the fluid when it, when there is a obstruction in the path of the flow, the fluid moves like this inside here. See, this is the wake zone where there is a large eddy produced. That zone is known as wake zone and this wake zone appears in this case too only when there is a flow perpendicular to the flat. In this case, fluid flowing over the upstream phase and when fluid reaches the edges of the plate, it separates from the plate and proceeds outward into the bulk of the fluid. Clear? The fluid over the upstream phase, when the fluid reaches the edge of the plate, both the edge of the plate, it separates from the plate and proceeds outward into the bulk of the fluid. Behind the plate there is a back outer zone of the fluid in which large eddies or vertices are produced. Again I am repeating, behind the plate, see in the figure, this portion. Behind the plate that means this portion. Behind the plate is a back outer zone and there is a production of large eddies or vertices and that zone is known as wake zone. 
so that wave zone is produced only in case 2 which is flow perpendicular to flight plate fine so in today's session we have covered about the boundary layer separation example of the reynolds number so this is about the chapter fluid flow phenomena so i am completing this lecture here i hope this is clear to all thank you Thank <laughs> you.